right, we'll get started. So, hi, and welcome to the Alpha Tracker webinar. Um, this is our monthly tips and tricks webinar. And this month's um, we'll be focusing on Tracker Mobile. So, I'm Jack, I'm the Alpha Tracker product lead. And I'm joined by my colleague Kim, who's our Alpha Tracker specialist. Hello. And Dan's also on the webinar with us. Um, and he'll be monitoring the Q&A. So if you've got any questions that you'd like answering, just drop them in there and Dan will be keeping an eye on that for us. Afternoon, so, everyone. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on those question and answers. So keep them coming and then I'll, uh, I'll ping those through to Jack and Kim and uh, we can get those sorted for you. Um, nice to see some familiar names on the participant list as well. So morning, uh, Charlotte, Gay, how are you doing? Um, it's good to see you all joining. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Dan. So, like I said earlier, this will be our webinar about track and mobile and productivity on site. So, the first thing that we'd like to show you is just a quick video that Robin's kindly done for us that he prepared earlier. Um, it will be a quick video just showing how to easily copy both location data and sample data. Um, across sessions. So it'll essentially um, stop surveyors from having to enter repetitive information and speed up um, their work on site. Um, so I'll just play that for you now. It's, it is a feature that um, you may not be familiar with or you may not have seen in your own tracker mobile. So if you like the look of it, just let us know and uh, we can get that enabled in your tracker mobile for you, no problem. I've been having fun today surveying our building here, the e-innovation centre, and I've already been surveying the ground floor, so you can see that I've gone into the reception, the corridor, the kitchen and the comms room, except I couldn't actually get into the comms room. We're now on the first floor, I'm going to show you how easy it is to copy an entire room, including all of the non-suspect information. Come with me Adam, with your camera. So this corridor on the first floor is the same, exactly the same construction as the corridor on the, uh, on the ground floor. So I'm going to do a new session. I'm going to say that this is location number six. And here is the trick, or I just need to say I'm on the first floor. So I'm on first floor location six, and here's the trick. We've configured a previous locations drop down here. So if I tap that and say this is the same as the corridor location number two, you'll see that it's put all of the non-suspect items and materials in without me having to select them, which means all I've got to do is scroll down. There was nothing suspect down there. So I can now just take my new picture of the corridor like so, and that's done it. That's created location six on the first floor, the corridor, as an, as an exact copy of the information in the corridor on the ground floor. Now let's have a look at doing a sample, so a cross-reference sample. So in the kitchen on the ground floor, we had a sink pad, and in this kitchen on the first floor, I imagine there's going to be exactly the same material, exactly the same type of sink pad. Let's have a look. Someone hasn't done their washing up. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So rather than sample this sink pad, I'm going to cross-reference it back to the sink pad on in the kitchen on the ground floor. So how do I do that? Well, this is even easier. So new session again. Again, I've just got to check I'm on the right floor. I am. I'm in now room seven, which is the kitchen. So let me just type that in. I could have chosen it from the drop down. There we go. So that's in the kitchen. Now I can pull through all of the non-suspect information from the kitchen downstairs because it's actually identical. So that was location three. Uh, so that has now put all my non-suspect materials in. But I'm going to do a suspect item, which is going to be the sink pad. Again, I could have picked that from the list. I'm giving myself a job to do there by typing. 
in fact it's brought it up anyway there we go yeah so the sync pad now um, it's a cross reference so I'm going to use my X approach X approaches are cross references we sometimes configure them as visually similar or if your terminology is different it might be something different but in my uh, handset here it's an X and that I'm going to say is the same as the same material as a sample I've already taken and the sample I've already taken was the sink pad in the kitchen now by doing that what it's done is it's automatically brought forward the correct sample number it, uh, I just need to say there's only one of them because the, the number might be different okay so let me just scroll back up to where I was so then I've got one of them but it's brought through the same uh, product type and surface treatment I've just got to say what damage it is well this one actually has some slight damage so I'll, I'll put it's low damage uh, I need to confirm the recommendation which is going to be manage and label and now all I need to do is take the photo. So I'm going to take one photo uh, stood back, like I would normally, just to show where in the room it is. And then the other photo I can take as my close-up, just to show the damage that I can see. So there we go. And that's done it. So that's using this samples already taken uh, selector which only appears if, if I just scroll up and find it, only appears if it's a cross-reference sample. So by choosing it to say it's a cross-reference I then get the list of samples I've already taken and it brings through all the information that it can into this session uh, just for me to update things like the condition. So there you go, so that's shown two different features. We've shown how to duplicate a location using a really safe and easy way in the application and we've also shown how to do cross-reference samples and bring forward the information from a previously sampled item. Thanks very much. So I hope you guys enjoyed that um, feature there. Um, like I said earlier, um, you may not be familiar with that feature, you may not have seen it before, you might not see it in your own Tracker Mobile. So if you want to have that feature enabled, just drop us a email or give us a call and we'll get that configured for you, no problem. So I was just, go on, I was just going to say, Jack, it, it just goes to show, it doesn't matter how many times you practice something or if you um, <laughs> recorded something, there's always something that will go wrong. So that phone call popping in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is. <laughs> Right, so the second thing that we'd like to show you um, is going to be searching of sessions um, on the handset. So I'm just going to switch um, the screen over to Kim's tablet so that she's able just to demonstrate that. So just bear with me just one moment. And Kim should be able to share the tablet screen now. Okay, that would be me sharing my screen. Yep, I can see that, all good, Kim. Yep, all good, great. All good. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go on to uh, MDS and here's my tracker mobile open. And what I want to show you is up here in the top, top right hand corner, next to your session lists, you've got a magnifying glass. So if I click on there, tap on there, a little box opens up and I can use this for searching, searching of my, of my session list. So it might be that, for example, is now I'm in the active session list and I want to find all the sessions that I've got that mention the word office. So I can just start typing it in and the list filters shows me what I'm looking for. And that's great. It's a good way of using it. And one thing I think is really good um, a good way of using this is if you start typing a project number, then you can filter that list by project number. That's very useful if you've got if you've been sent some reinspection sessions, to, uh, so you've got them on your on your active session list, and you just want to either filter them out or filter to just see those because you've got other project data there as well. It's a really good really good feature for searching uh, and filtering that list. And it will work not only in the active sessions, also in the sent and deleted. Kim, we've just got a, a question come in on that one. 
Um, is this available in everyone's tracker mobile or is it something that needs to be turned on? Is that the search feature, Dan? That's it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. The search feature should be available for everybody as long as you're using the latest version of MDS. So if you if you can't see that search feature um, in the app, just check the Google Play Store and make sure that you've got the latest update installed. But yeah, if you've got the, um, the update installed, you should be good to go. That's great. Thanks for that, Jack. Thank you. Okay, the second feature that we wanted to look at. So, yes, the next feature was to allow you to speed up the note taking in the um, in the app. So this is about essentially using um, speech to text or dictating um, to speed up how you take your notes. So Kim will just be able to demonstrate that now um, from the device. So I'm in the text field here. I'm in the sample notes box. And as you can see on the keypad, we should be able to see a little microphone button. So if you tap that microphone button, you can then dictate into that box, which is a nice quick way of getting some text in. So if I do it now, let's add some text here. Tap it again to turn it off. And there you go. There's the text in there. Nice and easy, and you can just amend it if it gets it slightly wrong, or you can make changes, or just dictate some more text. That will work also down in your notes box at the bottom. So for the general notes as well as for the sample notes. That's right. So you should be able to use that while on site to save you from having to type in any long um, bits of text in the notes that you would have to type in say repetitively um, over and over, you should just be able to just speak speak to your phone or your tablet and have it arrive in the box. Um, the last thing we'll just show you about speeding up notes is the standard comments. Now, some of you may or may not um, use this already, um, but a standard comments are something that can be configured inside your Alpha Tracker system. If you just search for it on the menu in the desktop side of Alpha Tracker, you should find it. Um, and you can set up your own standard comments and once selected, they'll populate the notes field with a block of text. Um, that saves your surveyor from having to constantly type out long notes that might always be the same, such as the no access like Kim selected there because the room was locked because there's no key. Um, but it also ensures some consistency between surveyors. That's right, yeah. Putting in the same same was fixed typos and all those sort of things and case correction, that type of thing. Um, and that brings us to a close on the features that we wanted to show you in Tracker Mobile um, for speeding up your productivity. Uh, Dan, is there any questions in the Q and A? Yeah, we've got one. Uh, we've got one come through, Jack. Um, it's actually from Derek, and yeah. Derek's asking: Are there any plans in MDS apps to validate data before it gets sent, or possibly allow for spell checking within each session? That's quite a tricky one. There. Okay. Um, so spell checking is um, something that you might just be able to enable on the device uh, when typing into the fields. Um, and they can also use stuff like um, auto suggest, et cetera. Um, so just check your uh, device settings and that might be available. In terms of validating um, before the data is sent in, that can be quite tricky because some of the validation um, relies on other data being in Alpha Tracker, especially with cross references. Um, but that's something that we can certainly take a look into and see if it's a feature that we could look at adding in a future release. Um, so we'll make a note of that. Thanks, Derek, and we'll um, we'll let you know what we find. Great stuff. Thanks, Jack. And I suppose the other thing to mention, uh, Derek, is you, you probably are aware, but we do have our Alpha Validator. Uh, checks obviously this is done after data sent in but it can be a good way to to pick up on things before a report actually goes out to your client so if you don't have that that's probably um something worth looking into and just drop us a line if uh, if you're interested in that and we can we can give you some more info 
Great stuff. Any other questions, Dan, or was it just... No, no, that's, uh, that's it. That was just the one from uh, from Derek on there. So um, no more no more questions at the moment. Obviously, if anyone does have any questions, um, please do send them through to us and we can, we can get back to you on that. And then if your colleagues are watching this in the recording, which will be made available after the webinar, they can obviously feel free to ping over any questions and um, yeah, we can we can get those answered for you. Real. Thanks, Dan. So we'll leave it there, guys. Um, and hopefully we'll see you on the next Alpha Tracker Tips and Tricks webinar. Thanks very much. Thank you. Fine.